Hello, everybody. I will talk about the market for gold bullion coins. This is a very international market, and I, I will show to you the sixth most important internationally traded gold bullion coins in the world. We have essentially two groups of coins. One group consisting of the Krugerrand, edited by the South African Mint, the American Eagle, edited by the United States Mint, and the Britannia, edited by the Royal Mint, consisting of a lower purity of gold from 91.6% gold in, in the total weight. And this makes the coins a little bit more reddish uh, compared to the four niner coins, the U.S. Maple Leaf, the Purse Mint Australian Nugget, also called Kangaroo, and our Viennese Philharmonic coin. They are pure gold, four niner gold. And uh, there exist also some coins, including five nine gold, so 99.999% pure gold. Uh, but in our perspective, this may be a little bit too expensive. And the good thing is for all our customers and all the customers of, of the world's gold coins, uh, you pay only for the gold, so you don't have to worry. There are some other coins as well, which I have not displayed on, on this chart. And the most important of these are the Chinese Panda coin and the Russian Chernovets coin. But these six coins I have shown to you are the most important coins on the international markets. Just to give you a short picture of our coin to make a little bit of advertisement, this coin, most of the coins as our coin exist also in platinum and in silver. So there are the gold coins, the platinum coins, and the silver coins. And there is one important feature depicted on our coin and also on the other coins, which make a coin a coin, is the face value, the nominal face value. Each of these coins I have shown to you have a face value much lower than the actual metal value. But as last resort, you can go to the mint, issue it, the coin and ask for the face value, which was, would be a big loss uh, for the time being. So if you want to sell a coin for the face value, please call me also during midnight. I will pay cash immediately. Gold is mostly a jewelry metal. On the left pie, you see the above ground stocks and 2015 so nearly 50% of all above ground stocks in gold are in jewelry. Then we have 17% in official gold holdings uh, with the central banks, 20% in private investment, and 16% in mostly technical use. And this changed significantly because the left pie shows you the situation in 2015 on the above ground stocks and the right pie, the red one, shows you the changes in 2015 and you see that the private investment has raised significantly from 20 to 30 percent and the industrial use decreased significantly and industrial use in this case also includes dental use. So as you might know, in at least in Europe, nobody anymore goes for gold teas. Uh, we have uh, mostly ceramic teas replacing the gold, much cheaper and more durable for this uh, purpose. And so the private investment got more and more important. The, the, Gold coming out of the production is approximately three quarters is mine production and one quarter comes out of gold scrap. This chart shows the demand correlated to the gold price and what you see immediately 
is that the physical demand is completely unrelated to the development of the gold price in the last 10 years. The price is mostly related to the ETFs. But here it's shown very clearly the, the price, the red line changes significantly, but it has no correlation or nearly no correlation at all to the physical demand in the market. This slide shows the investment over the years again, and it shows also the ETF inventory bill. So in 2013, a lot of in inventory in ETF was sold, also in 14 and 15, and in 16, it started to build up again. And in 19 and 20, even more, there is again a growth in, in the ETFs. The physical demand changed a little bit more in the direction of coins. In 2013, you see a big amount of bars in the demand, but this dropped significantly during the last years. The ratio of coins was higher than in the years prior to 2014. Here you see the quarterly official bullion coin sales, not only of our coin, but worldwide. And you see the first quarter of 20 uh, was the best quarter in bullion coins for many, many years. And, of course, this is directly related to the COVID crisis. We have seen the best months in, in our history in March this year. We have been rushed by the customers, and moreover, the price was of no importance. The people were so much afraid of the COVID crisis that they, they started to invest directly in the gold coins, and the result of this is the sales of 70 tons of gold coins in the first quarter of this year. This shows the original distribution of worldwide gold coin sales. We have 34% uh, of sales in North America. 27% of worldwide sales in Europe, 3% of Japan, 21% in other Asia, and 16% in other countries, South America, Africa, Australia. This is also quite a change if you compare it to the previous years. So the North American market decreases year by year, and the European and moreover the other Asian market is growing significantly. Just to show you a little bit of our market share, we are number one in Europe. We are number one or two in Japan. These figures display the figures of the second quarter of this year. So we, we are not very strong in, in uh, other Asia and in the US and in North America because uh, people tend to buy the coins of their own country first, which is understandable. So the U.S. people mostly buy the coins of the U.S. Mint, uh, the American Eagle and the Bison, or the Canadians, the Maple Leaf. And our global share in the second quarter of this year has been 19 percent, and we with this 19%, we have been number one in the world market this year. Thank you very much. I hope I could give you a short overview over the bullion market.